I had one of my students, I promoted him to brown belt and I got in a lot of trouble from John because I, I took him from purple belt to brown belt. He, my student had subbed like five black belts that year. And I was like, okay, time for a brown belt. And John's like, no, he's not good enough yet. I'm like, okay, but he subbed five black belts in competition. So what? You know, he did just have a new standard now. Mm. Their purple belts today at Henzo, at, at Henzo's John, it's a new standard. These guys are so good. It's scary, man. You better know the leg lock. Like I, like, I learned leg locks from them. Since forever, BJJ students have always been ranked according to the sports' five belt system. White, blue, purple, brown, and black. The fighter's belt is an indication of their experience and the level of their mastery of grappling techniques. However, a lot has changed in the current generation's BJJ belt system, thanks to the stellar contributions of influential BJJ coaches like John Danaher. Today, you can roll with someone who has incredible talent and is among the top grapplers in the world, and chances are high that they could just be a purple belt. This new mentality makes it a lot harder to achieve your black belt. But when you do, you are no doubt going to be a BJJ machine. Yes. Then be a black belt is getting killed by blue belts. Right. You harm your student when you give him a belt he can't carry. And yeah. the blue belt's killing your brown belt. Mm -hmm. It's embarrassing for him. Yeah. At least he's a blue belt getting beat by a blue belt. This makes it a necessity to understand what you can hope to expect when you reach each belt. We need to keep this system of grading in the world of martial arts because to the students, it is the main source of motivation. It keeps them going to achieve their black belts. But just before we get to the details of each BJJ belt, it's vital to understand that the BJJ community attracts two classes of people, the competitive athletes and the hobbyists. Quality coaching is not only for BJJ students that intend to compete. For students who want to learn BJJ with no intent of competing, it is also important that they learn in the right environment under good coaches. This class of BJJ students, often called hobbyists, just want to keep fit or learn self-defense techniques they could have up their sleeves just in case they ever get in any situation that threatens their safety. Street defense mastery. It's one of the most popular for obvious reasons. We'll just kind of do whatever, okay? Cross chokes and boom, 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 boom. Try to do whatever, this is the normal distance right here. Every day, BJJ athletes would be content to train two to three times a week. For them, it's all about having fun and enjoying training at their own pace, not because they needed to submit an opponent in a competitive match, but solely for personal reasons. However, the situation is totally different for competing students. They have to do extra work. They are in the dojo or gym multiple hours a day, six times a week. They drill techniques until it becomes second nature. BJJ athletes also try to understand every little angle when practicing a move and the purpose behind it. They study videos of other people grappling at a high level and try to analyze it. Basically, it becomes their job. But regardless of whether or not you are a BJJ enthusiast in training that hopes to compete, here's exactly what to expect of the new generation BJJ belts. Number one, white belt. The white belt is the first belt every BJJ student receives when they begin training. It is the hardest belt to get. Why? Walking in a BJJ gym full of killers and actually stepping on the mat with them is incredibly hard. Depending on their training, students are expected to spend between six months to 18 months at the white belt level. As a white belt, you learn the positions and many techniques, but you have no idea what to do with them. First thing you should be looking at escaping bad positions and submissions. This will give you the confidence at later belts to be able to go in and actually attack your own submissions. Renowned BJJ instructor John Danaher believes no different. For Danaher, white belts should focus on learning escapes. If you can't get out of a position, how can you ever start to attack? Start your training from the ground up. Your first sessions in Jiu-Jitsu, you're going to find everyone gets on top of you and you can't get out. So your first skill is the skill of being able to free yourself from positional pins. White belt students often rely on strength, but don't know the right moment to act. People who come in as white belts with experience in other forms of martial arts, such as wrestling or judo, typically progress faster. However, they may still struggle with timing, not knowing when to make a move. However, after six months of BJJ training, you can dominate anyone who hasn't done martial arts before. New generation of white belts, new standards. They train six times a week. They want to learn everything super fast. White belts fight way too hard. They don't understand when to stop. 
they don't understand how dangerous submissions can be, especially leg locks. Let's compare being a white belt to a baby learning to walk. At this stage, you are crawling on the floor, learning to sit and rolling on your back. Blue belt. Over 90% of people who begin the jiu-jitsu journey never make it to blue belt. The blue belt is the first belt students have to work to earn. While white belts are handed out to anyone who begins training, blue belts are earned. Students are expected to achieve the blue belt after one to three years of training. As a blue belt, you already know many techniques. You ask a lot of questions and still rely on strength, but with a better understanding of when to use it. You also improve your timing as you start to develop your own grappling style. The blue belt level is generally about experimenting and developing your skills. If you have trained in wrestling or judo before, you'll typically progress quicker. And chances are, if you've taken this route, then you're probably a dangerous blue belt, one that's eager to start competing and testing yourself. New generation blue belts, new standards. They are very dangerous, very strong. They possess infinite cardio because generally they are young. They are getting technically smarter. They can submit white, blue, and purple belts. Let's compare this again to a baby. At this level, you are taking your first baby steps. Purple belt. Purple belt, now you kind of know who you are. And now you kind of have a competition set team as a competitor. And now you're building systems off of this title. So what do I mean by observation? What you're doing in this belt is you're more observing when you're playing your favorite guard, your favorite style of passing. It should take you approximately five years of training to achieve the purple belt. As a purple belt, you know the majority of techniques. You are starting to create your own game and becoming super good at what you do. You may start to teach others. New generation purple, new standards. They are killers. Some submit purple, brown, and black belts. Some of them are really intense in competition and training. They train many times a week. They are really motivated because they see their improvements as they submit many fellow students. The majority of them are competing and starting to get their names out there. Compared to a baby, you walk easily and start to run. Sometimes you fall, but you're always ready to pick yourself up and keep going. Brown Belt. An athlete should achieve the brown belt after approximately 8 to 10 years of training. At this point, you are mastering techniques, transitions, and counters with near-perfect timing. You understand your own body and know which techniques work better for you. You have developed your own game and can fill in for your teacher whenever asked upon. New generation of brown, new standards. They are humble killers. Teachers start to participate in well-known competitions to get their names out there. Might change schools in search of a more competitive environment. Have their own group of people who train with them every day. Start to understand that they can't go 100% every day. Start to train a lot smarter compared to a baby. You run every day and love it. Black belt. I'm a nerd, I got a PhD. I learned more about life, about the mind, and these masks than I have in all the years of school. The humbling reality that I'm not special. If you want to be good at anything, you have to work really hard. It's expected that a student becomes a black belt after 10 to 15 years of training. At this level, you are confident in your skills, but you also understand that the martial art is infinite. Every day you can learn new techniques and make small adjustments that can change your whole game making you a more effective grappler. As a black belt, you may consider opening a school, teaching at your own school, moving to a top school to compete full-time, or simply enjoying the fact that you are a black belt and have achieved something less than 1% of the population has. New generation of black belt, new standards, top fighters in the world. Purple belts and brown belts can't even compete against them. They use 50% of their strength to win against others. They put themselves in bad positions and wait until the last second to start the process of getting out of a submission. Compared to a baby, you crawl, you roll, you sit, you walk, you run, you jump. 
Finally, before a student is awarded a belt, certain requirements amongst others are considered. These include number of training hours, knowledge of techniques, skills on the mat, consistency, attitude. Keep in mind, everything that was said in the video is what happens in 95% of the students. There will always be exceptions who get their black belts faster or that destroys everyone. Even top contenders in the world is a purple belt. Here are just a few exceptions. Nikki Rod, BJ Penn, Helena Kravar. Who you are when you walk in will tend to be accentuated by jiu-jitsu. If you're a nice person, when you walk in the door, jiu-jitsu will make you a nicer person. But if you're an asshole and you walk in through the door, jiu-jitsu will make you more of an asshole because it'll give you more power. We would love to hear from you. Kindly leave a comment below. Also hit the like and subscribe button to our channel for more BJJ videos.